everyone. My name is Emily and I'm from the Mogador Branch Library and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to write a check. So the first thing that you're going to notice when you begin filling out a check is in the upper left hand corner you're going to notice your personal information. Um, on our example today it is blank just because I didn't want to use a personal check with my personal information on it just for um, privacy reasons. So this check is showing blank in that spot. However, normally you would see your name and address at the bare minimum, and then you also might see your phone number. When you're ordering a book of checks, I would highly recommend getting them with your phone number on it. Um, most places that you write checks to will require you to have a phone number on a check. So if you order them with your phone number already printed on it, then you don't need to go in every single time you write a check and hand write in your phone number. It's just going to save you a lot of time down the road um, and just make it easier for you in the long run. Okay, and then over here in the top right hand corner, you're going to see the numbers 1001. And what that is, is just the checks identification number. Um, each check in your book of checks is going to have a different number. And that's just so when the people that access your account to get the money out, um, they only pull the money associated with this check number and not one of the other numbers. It's just identification number for the check so that they're getting the right amount out of the book. You're also going to see underneath that is the date line. You'll notice that the 20 is printed already on there. That's just because banks want to make it as easy as possible for you so you don't have to write as much. And since we already know that the year is going to start with 2-0, at least for the next long while, they already have it printed on the check. So you'll just write in the date, today's date, for example, is September 15th, 2020. So all I'll have to write in is September 15th and then 20. All right, so the next thing that you're going to notice is pay to the order of. So that what that line is, is for who you are going to write the check to. Um, for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna pretend that we're writing a water bill, so we'll write our check out to the city of Mogador, um, but it could be any number of different things you could be writing it to. It could be a person, you could write the first and last name there. If it's a business, you would write the business names. If it's um, a bill that you're paying, it could be either for to the credit card company or you know what, whatever the bill's um, company name is, or you could even be writing it to your school for your student loans. Um, you know, whatever the, or whoever you are sending the money to, their name is gonna go on that line there, the pay to the order of line. Now the next thing that you'll notice will be this little square box with the dollar sign in front of it. So what that's going to be is for the numeric value of whatever the amount you are writing a check for. So since this is a water bill, we're just going to use the number 5962 as our bill price that we are paying. So that's going to be what you write in the box and you just write it out using numbers. And next you'll see a line underneath here and then followed by the word dollars. So what you're going to write here is using the alphabet, you're just going to write out the same number that you put in the box as numbers. So here we're just going to write out 5962 um, alphabetically and after we've written out $59 using the alphabet, you'll notice that I just write 62 over 100, and that's just the shorthand way of writing cents. Um, especially when you start writing checks worth higher dollar amounts, you're gonna be squeezing a lot of letters onto that tiny line. So anything that you can shorthand, you're just gonna save space on. So that's just how you shorthand cents, is the cent over 100, and then you'll see me draw a line after as well, and that just signifies that nobody else can add in anything after I've drawn that line, so nobody can try to change your check for being a higher amount or anything like that. That just shows that that's the end of the check, and that is the final amount that you are writing the check for. The next thing that you are going to notice is the line on the bottom left-hand corner there that says, memo. Um, what that line is used for is mostly account numbers or identification purposes for the reason behind writing the check. Um, usually you won't use this unless you are writing a bill or making a payment um, associated with some type of an account somewhere. Um, some people write when you go to the grocery store like that it was for groceries or a specific item that you were purchasing using that check. Um, but most of the time, the memo line is used specifically for accounts. 
and that's just as a backup in case for some reason the check's name or address information on the top is incorrect. They can also find you from the memo or the account number that you're putting on that memo line there. So that's just the reason that they have you put the account number there is just as like a double certification that they know who to deposit the money um, from the check into the proper account. And that's only for bills as far as like using the memo line goes and account numbers. There's really not much use for a memo line otherwise. So the next line that you're gonna see over here in the bottom right hand corner, um, there's nothing written on it to indicate what it is, but what that is is the line for your signature. So you will just sign the check there and what that does is endorses it. And what that means is that you have signed off on the money being okay to come out of your account and with your signature there, that's the only way the money can come out of your account. Um, they just call it endorsing it, which is just the A-okay for the money to come out of your account. So now that we're looking at the very bottom of our check, you'll notice these three different groupings of numbers that are kind of separated by weird bracket symbols. The first set of numbers is going to be the routing number for your bank. So what that is, is just your bank's identification number so that they know out of all the banks in the world, what bank specifically your money is located at so that they can get it from. The next set of numbers, the middle set you see there, is going to be your account number. So out of all of the accounts at that specific bank's routing number, that is the only account that they can get your money out of. That is where your money is located. So it's sort of like a map, these sets of numbers on the bottom here. So you're going to have to go to point A, which is the routing number, which tells you what bank the money is located at, and then you have to go to point B, which is going to be the account which your money is located at, and then point C is going to be the check number. So that's the last set of numbers you see there. Um, it's going to match the numbers that are in the top right hand corner that we talked about at the beginning of the video. Um, it's going to be the same here, the very bottom last set of numbers. They're going to match and that's just going to be your final destination for when they go into your account to get the money out. They know what check number they are looking for within your account and the monetary amount that was written for that check number. So it's basically just a map for the digital system in the bank to recognize where they are getting the money from so that they are getting the right amount from the right account and the right place. Thank you guys for joining me today. This video was presented by the Akron Summit County Public Library System. If you have any questions or comments, you can either sound out in the comment section below or you can stop in the Mogador branch and speak with me directly um, at the Mogador branch and at any of the Akron Summit County Public Library locations. We have multiple books on check writing and personal finances that you can access to learn more about um, checking and banking or even if you are interested in finding out more information further on the topic of personal finance, you can stop into any of our locations or even use Overdrive to access our digital collection. Um, thank you guys so much for joining and I hope you have a great day. Bye now.